Welcome to XNA and Windows Phone 7. My name is Bill Loden, and I'm going to spend the next few minutes showing you how you can use Microsoft XNA to build a game for Windows Phones. XNA is one of two platforms that you can use to develop for Windows Phone. In this session, we'll be focusing on just XNA, but keep in mind that you can also use Silverlight to build applications, even games, for Windows Phone. First, a quick refresher. Simply put, Microsoft XNA is a runtime environment for games. It's a managed runtime, meaning that you must use managed code, specifically C Sharp. With XNA, you can target different platforms for your games, Xbox 360, Windows, and Windows Phone, which of course is the subject of this video. Now the tool you're going to use is called Microsoft XNA Game Studio 4.0. It's a gaming-focused, integrated development environment, and its job is to make game creation as easy as possible. Now, for those of you who have used Game Studio in the past, you might be interested in some of the new features in this version. Simpler graphics APIs, new configurable effects, integration with Visual Studio 2010, better audio support, and of course, the ability to target Windows Phone. Now, let's get to the good stuff. That is, how do you build an XNA game? You'll begin with a C Sharp class that inherits from the Microsoft.XNA.Framework.Game class. Next, you override and implement the initialize and load content methods. In other words, you get everything set up for the game. Then you override the update method with your game logic. Here's where you check for user input, do your mathematical calculations, and check for any important in-game conditions. Finally, you override the draw method to actually paint pixels on the screen. Now here's another more graphical way to view XNA game flow. The game starts with a call to your initialize method, followed by load content, then update, and then draw. But here's where the game loop kicks in. Update and draw are repeated over and over and over again for the duration of the game. Now eventually, the player leaves the game, at which point the unload content method gets called, and the game exits. Let's see how it works in a quick demo. So I'll fire up Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone. I'll click on the New Project link, and you'll notice that I've got a number of templates. And of course, I'm going to choose the Windows Phone Game template, leave the other defaults, and click OK. Now, it's going to create the solution now, and there's actually going to be two projects, the game itself and then a content project, which is really nice to have that separate if you're going to be targeting multiple platforms and you wanted to have some shared resources. So let's take a look at that game flow once again. Here we have the initialize, followed by load content, followed by the update method, followed by the draw, and then finally unload. So you can see everything we talked about is there. Now to begin with, in the code we're going to need a couple of member variables. Uh, a texture 2D that represents the graphic that we want to draw. It's going to be a, just a simple logo. And then a vector 2, which is a struct that represents the position of that, uh, that logo. Now we'll go to the load content. We know this is called after initialize. And of course, this is where we would load uh, all of our graphical content. And so we use a specific method, a static method load from the content class. And you notice that logo doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to have to go add it. And I'm going to add it to the content project, not to the game project itself. And again, that's so I could share uh, across multiple projects if I had them. So we'll just add an existing item, just a regular PNG file there. And so now that's going to be loaded by this line of code. Now one more thing we want to do here while we're in load content, and that's to uh, define the starting location of that logo. And we're going to put it smack dab in the middle of the screen. So we need to calculate what that is based on the current viewport. That's just the current size available space of the, uh, of the screen. So next, we need to actually go to the update method. So this is the first part of that game loop. And uh, we're going to be using the emulator. So we, we can't, in, in this case, leverage the accelerometer yet because the emulator at this stage doesn't support it. So instead, I'm going to use touch to interact with the game. So I use something called a touch collection. I retrieve that from the touch panel. And we just make sure that there is a touch. And if there is, if there's at least one touch point, because of course there could be multi-touch, 
uh, we get the first one. So this particular game is only going to support one touch location or one touch point. And then the rest of this is all just a little bit of math to figure out where we want to send the logo because we're going to we're going to move this graphic around the screen so that it moves towards the touch point wherever that happens to be. So we're calculating where the touch point is. We're doing a little bit of math uh, to move the logo position towards uh, whatever the touch point is. Now we're ready to actually put pixels on the screen. So we go to the draw method and the way this works is, uh, well, first let's change the background color there. And then what we have to do here is use this sprite batch object to call begin and then draw and then end. So we start with the call to begin. We set the sprite sort mode as well as the blend mode. So we're gonna just use an alpha blend and we're going to use the immediate sprite sort mode and then we start drawing and of course you could you would normally draw all of your you know moving pieces in terms of your uh, uh, your game in this case we just have the one item to draw the logo texture we want it in a specific position and then we call end when we're done and that is the draw method with that our game such as it is is finished so i'll go ahead and hit f5 or start debugging and it'll fire up the emulator and of course we've accelerated this a little bit because the emulator the first time you run it is going to take a little bit of time and of course my mouse will be substituting for touch so notice that as I move the touch point around the logo follows that cursor follows that touch point and that's a very very basic premise of a game in Windows Phone 7 So that's a very quick look at XNA in Windows Phone. Now, if you're interested in a copy of the code, you'll be able to download it from my blog. And as always, thank you very much for your time.